Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer on Sunday the 22nd of March, the fourth Sunday of Lent and Mothering Sunday. This is our first virtual service with Christ Church, Barnton and St Luke Winnington. We're so glad you're able to join us and if you have the link, feel free to follow the liturgy with the Church of England website. We're so sorry you can't be with us today, but we can join together to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love and according to your judgment, give us life. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah 43, verse 1 through to 7. May the Lord bless thee, reading and hearing of his word. But now, thus saith the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. And when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honoured, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Our New Testament reading is from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through to 14. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, the physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands, Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. May the word of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. The Old Testament passage is a powerful promise of God's presence to be with us in difficult times, even times which threaten to overwhelm us. He promises to be with us in the fire and the flood. Many prayers have been answered in Australia where fires have threatened the nation. But Christians have shared testimonies of how God has helped them. We've recently had terrible flooding. And while this has been tra traumatic, we have not been overwhelmed. Now we face a new threat. And there has been tragic loss, loss of life, loss of liberty, loss of security, loss of community, as empty shells reveal a disappointing selfishness and fear in our communities. Yet God says, I love you, I am with you, I will be with you, and I will redeem you. We can hold on to his promises in this time and know that his promises will be fulfilled. In the beginning of creation, in the Genesis, the world is described as darkness and chaotic waters. But the Holy Spirit is described as hovering over the face of the waters. And the Hebrew means to hover over like a mother hen over her nest protecting her eggs and newborns. In the darkness and chaotic waters of life, the Holy Spirit is God's presence with us, who hovers over us as a mother protects her children. Then God said, 
Let there be light. And there was light. God's light will shine in our lives. Paul's letter to Ephesus encourages us that this light of God is given to us out of his grace. It is not earned. We don't deserve it. We receive it by faith, which is trust. Trust God in the darkness because light will shine, because God is good and God is love. He brought us into his family. He's adopted us, the family of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We have hope for the future because it is in God's care. We can't depend on people because people will let us down. Not just the ones who stockpile pasta and toilet rolls, but even the best people fail because we fail. God's grace is freely available to us as he draws us near. James 4 verse 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn and weep, turn your laughter into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. As that isolation sets in, as people around the world and closer to home succumb to infection and other diseases, other issues, there is a need to embrace the dark night of the soul, to mourn and cry, to humble ourselves now before God and he will redeem us and lift us up again. The walls that now divide us will come down, just as it did between the Jews and the Gentiles in the early church and he gives us his peace because Jesus is the Prince of peace and he's freely given himself for us and rose again with the promise that one day he will return on this mother and sunday i close with isaiah 49 verse 15 can a mother forget her nursing child can she feel no love for the child she has born but even if that were possible i would not forget you let us pray lent prayers we come before the son of god crucified and risen who eternally intercedes for us to the Father, saying, turn our hearts again. Son of God, you came into the world to save sinners. You became poor that we might become rich. You have taken on yourself all our sufferings. You loved the church and gave yourself for her for the joy that was set before you. You endured the cross. King of the ages, you brought us gift of life, opened the way to unending joy, turn our hearts again. And a prayer for mothers. Lord, thank you for all our mothers, for the new ones who endure sleepless nights with infants in arms, for the busy ones who juggle the pressures of home and family life, for the steadfast ones who nurture and care for our special vulnerable children, for the patient ones who always seek to forgive and engage with their preteens, for the persistent ones who cleverly find new ways to connect with their many adults, for the mother aunts who step into cradle and care for nieces and nephews, for all grandmas who love and support their precious grandchildren, for the foster mums that are called together and cover the fragile ones, for the Sunday mums who care for our children and lead them in faith, for the mums who give far beyond their own resources, who overcome disability to cherish and love. Thank you, Lord, for all our beautiful mothers. Help us to support them and keep them in our prayers. May you bless them now on this their special day. Amen. Merciful Lord, absolve your people from their offences, that through your bountiful goodness we may all be delivered from the chains of those sins which our frailty have committed. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us to pray, so we pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. God bless you.